My name is Lindsay Hamilton. I'm a regional sales engineer for Bitplane based in California. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be going over some image processing tips for improving 3D visualization of thicker samples. I'm going to be focusing on two image processing functions in particular. The first is an attenuation correction, which allows you to correct for the gradual loss of signal or intensity in the z-axis. The second is a masking function using a surface, which allows you to improve your signal to noise in a volume, making the visualization and analysis of that data easier. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to be using this two photon data set. This is a 500 micron thick section of a mouse brain. The red or psi 3 is blood vasculature. The green or psi 2 is microglia. And for the demonstration that I'm about to do, I'm going to be focusing in on the Psi 3 channel. So I'm going to turn the Psi 2 channel off. When I turn that channel off, you'll notice there is a significant amount of background in this blood vasculature. There's also a significant amount of attenuation. So you'll notice that the blood vessels at the top of this data set are significantly brighter than those at the bottom of this data set. In order for me to perform an attenuation correction, I need to have an idea of what the intensity values are for the top of the stack versus the intensity values at the bottom of the stack. The easiest way to do that in Amaris is to use the slice view, which allows you to visualize the individual slices that make up your 3D volume. If I drag the slider bar down, you'll notice that I can move to the bottom of the stack and get an idea of intensity value in that location. So if I move my cursor onto a blood vessel, the numbers that are changing in the bottom left hand corner represent intensity value. If I just drag this around, you'll notice it will change based on where the location of my cursor is. The first value, 344, is representing the Psi 2 intensity value, and the second value, 703, is representing the Psi 3 intensity value. So what I want to do right now is to locate the, uh, a ballpark or an estimate for the contribution of intensity for blood vessels at the bottom of the stack. So by moving my cursor up and down that blood vessel, it looks like my intensity value is around about 600 gray levels. I'm now going to the top of the stack where the signal is brighter, and I'm also going to look for a blood vessel that I can use to get an idea of intensity. So when I do this, you'll notice the intensity is significantly um, higher than it was in those um, bottom uh, slices of the stack. So we're now looking at possibly a ballpark of around 1500 gray levels. Once I have those two values, we can now go into the image processing menu at the top of the Amaris window and scroll down to the attenuation correction option. Attenuation correction does have a MATLAB icon next to it, which means that in order for you to utilize this function, you do need the Amaris XT module. If I click on attenuation correction, it, open up, it opens up a MATLAB window, which I'm going to minimize. And in the dialog, it asks for three values or three pieces of information. The first being the channel that you would like to apply the attenuation correction to. In this case, we want to apply it to channel 2, which is our Psi 3 channel. It also asks for the intensity at the front of the stack versus the intensity at the back of the stack. Now the front of the stack for us is actually the bottom of the stack because, because it's based on the numbering system that you can see on the left hand side here. So this value actually represents the slice number. So the highest number would be the back of the stack and the lowest number would be the front of the stack. So for us, this is the uh, bottom of the stack, so I'm going to enter in 600 gray levels. I'm also going to put in our 1500 gray levels for the top of the stack. Once that's been entered, click OK and the attenuation correction will start to be calculated. Once the attenuation correction has completed, it will turn all of your channels on. So like I did before, I'm going to turn off the side 2 channel and focus in on the blood vessels. So 
We're in the middle of the stack right now. If I bring it down towards the bottom, you'll notice that all of the blood vessels look brighter, but so does the background. So one of the things you need to be aware of when applying att an attenuation correction to your data set, it will amplify all intensity values, not just the intensity values for the structures that you're interested in. If I go up to the top, you'll now see that the intensity at the top and now at the bottom should be more similar. I'm going to switch to the 3D view so that you can see the 3D um, uh, z-axis visualization, which will indicate um, that the, we have now a consistent intensity throughout the volume. The next image processing function that I'm going to show you is a masking function and this can help us to get rid of the background uh, information that we have and make it easier for us to visualize and analyze the blood vessels in this particular data set. The first thing that we need to do is to create a surface that represents the objects of interest, in our case the blood vessels. So here is a surface that I've created for the blood vessels in the data set. One thing to remember, attenuation correction will make it easier for you to visualize or threshold a surface throughout the uh, Z. Um, and also, it is very important to implement or utilize a filter within your surface creation so that you can get rid of the background uh, debris or background signal that you're not interested in. Once you've created a surface object, the next thing that we're going to do is take advantage of the masking capability. So in the surface object, we're going to go to the edit tab. In that edit tab, there is a mask function down at the bottom. If I click on that, it's going to open up a dialog that requests that we enter or uh, choose the channel that we want to apply this to. We're going to do this with the Psi 3 channel. Also notice that there is a checkbox right underneath that allows you to duplicate the channel before applying mask, meaning that you're not overwriting your original data. The second thing is we are going to set the voxels outside of the surface to zero, meaning anything that is not inside of the boundary of the surface will be turned to zero or black. You can also apply, if needs be, a voxel setting for the inside of your surface. In this particular case, I want to do it to improve the signal to noise, so I'm just going to turn off the background. If I click OK, that's going to go ahead and start calculating this masked channel. Once that calculation has completed, again, all of the channels will be turned on. So I'm going to turn off the surface I'm going to also turn off the Psi channel and the original Psi 3. You'll notice that we now have a new channel labeled Masked Psi 3, and this is the one that I wanted to be able to visualize. So once you have created that masked channel, it is now substantially easier to see where all the blood vessels are. Um, it's also easier to see the location of the microglial cells to the blood vasculature without having all of that background information in there. One other thing that I wanted to point out is whenever you apply a mask function and get rid of some of the background information, the other visualization techniques that you have access to in Amaris are also now available for you to um, utilize. So in this case, I'm going to switch into the blend technique, which allows us to include shading and opacity. And I'm also going to adjust some of the display adjustment settings uh, to visualize that 3D data. So now we have a 3D reconstruction with both an attenuation correction and a surface mask to make it easier to see those structures of interest. If I was to compare that to the original data set, so this is the data with the background um, but has been actually um, attenuation corrected. Um, it's a little bit more difficult now to get a similar result um, using the blend technique because there is so much more background uh, in this particular volume. So um, I hope that this tutorial was useful for you and uh, if you to get any more information 
on uh, MRS, you have a couple of resources that you can refer to. We have a reference manual under the Help menu in the Amaris installation, and also you can refer to our website, www.bitplane.com forward slash learning, for more information. Thank you for watching.